Hey there, welcome back to the channel and this is the second video in the series of regrouping receivables and payables in S4 HANA. The first video we have understood about how to exactly do the regrouping, what is regrouping, why do we require regrouping as a month end activity. In this video, we will execute a end to end regrouping, we will see how we can transfer the receivables or payables in vendors, customers, and as well as GL accounts. So let us jump into the video. But before that, do not forget to like it, share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Also, we have an option to join and thanks as you know. So let's begin. So this is the customer line item report and we're having multiple line items with the different areas. That means the different due dates some are in the past, some are in the future. So if we see here, we have sorted it based on the areas. And there are line items which are due in the coming two months. Some line items are due in the upcoming one to two months. And some are due within the next one month. And some are already due. That means this is less than one month. Right. So on the other side, if we also see the balances of each transaction, some are debit balances and some are credit balances. So credit balance is always stated as a payable, irrespective of whether it is a customer account or a vendor account. If the transaction is a credit, that means it is always a payable because we are supposed to pay it, maybe be it vendor or the customer, but we are supposed to pay the transaction to the business partner. On the other side, if the line item is having a debit amount, irrespective of it as a vendor or a customer, that is something that we are supposed to receive. So that is always stated as a payments. So keep in mind, whenever you are doing configuration for this regrouping, you need to take receivables and payables depending upon the nature of that or the balance of that transaction, but not based on whether it is an accounts receivables, which is a customer or accounts payable, which is a vendor. So now let us go to this transaction code FAGLF101 and try to regroup the customer and the vendors. So this is my company code and date I am giving it up as of today's date. And the sort method, we have created a sort method. Sort method is something which will tell how to sort these line items or how to segregate these line items. I already have done the configuration. For receivables, the configuration says split the line items into three buckets. One is less than one month, one is between zero to one month, and the other one is between one to two months. That means, or more than two months. And this is based on the net due date of the line items. And similarly, for the payables, I have done configuration to split into two buckets. One is between zero to five days, and the other one is more than five days. This is the valuation area. Under the selections, I'm giving only customer for now. But as we discussed, customer can have both receivable line items as well as payable line items. So this is the customer. And now here, do not enable this generate postings if we want to run as a test run. If you enable this, then the actual transactions are posted. And if you see here, the transactions are expected to be reversed the next month or if you're running it mid month, then it is expected to be run or reversed the next day. So you can disable this checkbox and change the date manually or you can enable this checkbox and let the system do it automatically. Reversal document type, the system will take it automatically based on what is configured for this document type. If you want something different, then you can give that here. Always remember that the reversal transaction does not reverse the original one, but it posts another transaction or another document with the negative impact so that the overall sum between these two documents is zero. Now let us execute it. So this is the output. And one important thing here is, we are executing it as on 21st of September. That means this program will consider only those documents which are having the posting date 
on or before 21st of September for this run. So any document which is having a posting date beyond 21st is not considered at all for this run. So if you go back to the open items, we are having one open item which is having a posting date and document date as 30th of September. So if you see here, even the posting date is in the future. Because we are executing it as on 21st, the system will not consider this as an open item at all because this is not posted as on that date. So the system will not even show that document in this run. So always understand that it will take only those documents which are open as on this date. This is the very same functionality as that of FBL 5N. So if you go back to FBL 5N and if you change this date as 2109-2024, the system will not even show that 18 document ending with 14 here. So that is the behavior of both FAGL F101 as well as the FBL 5N. Now, all these open items are categorized into different buckets. One main categorization is based on whether it is a payable or whether it is a receivable. So all the credit line items are on one side and all the debit line items are on the other side. So if we first see the payable line items. As I said, payables, the configuration is to split the line items between 0 to 5 days and more than 5 days. So if we see here, these documents are having the due date in the past. That means it is less than five days. So that is going to take in the past in this bucket of zero to five days. And if there is any document which is in the future, but less than five days in the future, then that is going to be between above five days category. Now, if we see the receivables, on the receivables also, there are multiple categories. and if we see here, the configuration of receivables as we discussed says that line items which are between the past one month are one category and which is in the next one month but less than two months is on another category but anything that is more than two months is in the third category. The same way the system had even split this and this splitting is based on the net due date in comparison with the date of execution. So, any document that is having the net due date in the past but less than one month is falling under this bucket. If you see here, all of these are in the past but it is falling within less than one month. So, date, the net due date, if you see here, 39, yes, this is less than one month. 31.8 in the past, again less than one month. So, all of these are within one month. So, what is next one month? It is anything which is falling before or on of 21st of 10, 2024 as a net due date is something that you will see here. And if there is anything beyond 21st of 10, which is beyond one month, but less than 21st of 11, that is November, that is falling under the category of one to two months. And anything which is having a net due date after two months from the date of execution, which is beyond 21st of November, that means from 22nd of November, that is something which is falling under greater than two months category. So this is how the splitting is done. So we had three categories. One is anything within the next one month or even in the past. And the second one is within the next one to two months. And the third category is beyond the next two months. So the system had categorized this. So this is how we can execute it for customers, vendors, and even for the GL accounts. All we need to do is have the selections, select the type of account. That means whether it is an asset, customer, vendor, material, GL, anything, and enter the respective document numbers or the respective customer account GL account or a vendor account here and generate postings and now if I execute it and if we see the messages, if there is any error message then it will be read but we don't have any errors. Go back and click on postings then you can see all the different documents that are posted. So depending upon the categorization that has been done, so we are having total four categories 
anything which is having 0 to 5 days, now let me sort based on this. So, anything that is having 0 to 5 days is the payable part. We had 2 line items. So, for those 2 line items which are falling under payables, we need to have 2 documents posted. One is the reclassification document and the second one is the reversal document. So, we are having 1, 2, 3 and 4 documents posted for this reclassification. Now, under receivables, we have 4 categorizations. Sorry, we have 3 categorizations. One is less than 1 month. One is 1 to 2 months. And the third one is more than 2 months. So, for every line item, the system will post a entry and same for the reversal entry. So, let us try to identify that. If you see here, or let us sort it based on the document number. Now, here we are having one document posted for this amount, which is 7 lakh or 7 million. So, let me open this document. So, this is the document. Here the amount is posting on this adjustment account and this is posting on this reconciliation account or the regrouping account, which is having a description as less than one month. Now, for this same document with the same amount, you should see another entry posted or another document posted, which is for the reversal. So, that is this one. So if I open this, this is going to have a contra impact on the same thing. So, see here, this is the positive impact and this is the negative impact on the very same GL account. And the offsetting entry is always the adjustment entry. So, if you see the net impact of these two, there are two points to understand. One, we did not touch the actual reconciliation account. What is the actual reconciliation account? The actual reconciliation account is CUST001. So, we did not touch that, but we have posted onto two new accounts. One is the regrouping account. We have given different regrouping accounts depending upon the duration of regrouping. And the other one is a common adjustment account. So, this net impact here is 0. So, this is how regrouping works. We can also see another document. From this list, if you take anything which is 1 to 2 months, then we will see this document. And here, this is posted on to an account 1 to 2 months. And this will have another uh, reversal entry. And that is here. So, the one which we saw is already a reversal entry. And the original regrouping entry is this one. So, this is the positive impact. That means debit and this is the credit. So, this is how depending upon whether the line item is treated as receivables or payables, and depending upon the bucket configuration that we have done or the sorting configuration or the regrouping what we can call as, depending upon how many regrouping buckets we have created and the GLs that are assigned to that regrouping, that is posted on the date and reversed again so that the net impact is zero. So, if we extract the reports, the financial statement reports as on 21st, then we will see that the entire open items are classified into 1 to 2 months or less than 1 month and more than 2 months and entire payables are classified into 0 to 5 days and beyond 5 days. So, that is the functionality of regrouping. So, I hope you found this video useful and in the next video, we will see the configurations that are required for this regrouping and see you in the next video. Take care.